Are you interested in Linux Mint? Maybe you're looking to switch from Windows or Mac OS and you want a demo before you install it on your own system. Maybe you're interested to see what other alternative operating systems are out there. Or you might use a different version of Linux and you want to see what Mint is all about. This is part of a new video series I'm making on this channel, and the goal is really to introduce Linux and a few of the concepts that go along with it, but also just to exist as a nice friendly series that you can reference if you have any questions on Linux Mint. Let's get into it, shall we? I'm installing Mint on a 2012 MacBook Air. This will be the demo machine that I use for this series, but you can install on pretty much any machine from the last decade. If you want to know how to go about installing Mint, you can find a link to an article I made on my blog in the description below. This is the first thing you'll see after you install Linux Mint, and it prompts you to complete a few of the common tasks that you might want to do after you've installed a new operating system. The first thing I always do in a new install is launch system settings, go to themes, and set it to dark mode. We'll also change the desktop wallpaper to something a bit more interesting. Ah, it looks pretty nice, let's go with that. And this is Linux Mint. You'll notice it looks pretty familiar if you're coming from Windows. You've got the main menu down in the bottom left. You've got a few pinned icons. The defaults are the File Explorer, which is pretty similar to most modern operating system file explorers. You've got Firefox down there and also your terminal as well. In the bottom right, you've got the system tray. Here we've got OBS Studio, which is a program I'm using to record the screen. And then all of the normal system status things as well, like your Wi-Fi, your audio level, your battery level. You might be able to figure out why I recommend Linux Mint for new users of Linux. Just check out how easy it is to navigate the operating system. It works like you'd expect. If you know how to read and look at icons, then you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna have any issues navigating the operating system. Things might be in slightly different places, but it's going to be pretty intuitive for most people. I'm running this installation of Linux Mint on my 2012 MacBook Air. The specs of this machine are very low. We've got a dual core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 120 gig SSD, and an Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics card. But this goes to show that Mint will run on pretty much anything from the past decade. So what does Mint come with by default? We've got the latest version of Firefox, which works really well. If we go to the main menu down at the bottom left, you can see that we've got categories. We've got accessories, which is all of your tools, like a calculator, an archive manager, which is like WinRAR, and other small tools like image viewers and light text editors. We've got a graphics tab with a few default programs here. We've got some internet apps, including that Firefox, a mail client, and the transmission BitTorrent client. It also comes equipped with an office suite, which is LibreOffice. This is a free office suite, but I do hear that there are better alternatives available if you want to go and look for them. It's also compatible with and can read and write Microsoft Office formats. You've got a few sound and video options here. These are mainly media players. And then system tools and preferences. This menu is all fully customizable, and you're never going to see a tile in there that advertises a Microsoft product or service. You definitely won't be seeing AI suggestions or anything like, hey, did you know it's World Pizza Day today? It's just a very clean, simple menu. If you've chosen to use Linux, even Linux Mint, which is good for beginners, you're going to have to get into the terminal at some stage. So let's open it up. This is what you get. You type commands and you hit enter. Obviously, that's not a command, so I'll just do a quick NeoFetch. NeoFetch is a package that's built into most Linux distros and it displays your system specs. Try not to get intimidated with the terminal. You'll often find that the easiest way to complete a task is actually just to use this command line interface. Things like installing packages. One of the ways to get software on Linux Mint is to use apt-get. So I'm going to do sudo, which is a command you use to elevate privileges or get the computer to ask for your password. And then I'm going to do apt-get, which is a built-in package manager in Linux Mint. And then I'm going to say install, and we're going to go ahead and install GIMP, which is an alternative to some of the graphics programs that you might get from Adobe. It asks for the password since I've put it in sudo, and I'll enter my password, hit enter. And there we go, it's asking if I want to install GIMP. I'll hit Y for yes, and hit enter. This is just an example of how the terminal works, and the type of task that you can do in the terminal. 
This is for demo purposes, but you'll see that there are a few different things going on here. The sudo command elevates your privileges, and then what we're trying to do here is use apt-get, the package manager, to update our packages. This word update here is called an argument, and you can almost think of it as a subcommand that's built into apt-get. So we're using apt-get with admin privileges to install an update. So we touched briefly on getting software in Linux Mint. We had a look at the apt-get command in the terminal, but what are some of the other ways? Well, there's actually a built-in software center which acts kind of like an app store. You access it on the left-hand side here, it's called Software Manager. And in here you'll find software packages that you might want to install. There are a few featured ones here, but you can also just search by category. The advantage of getting software this way is that it's super easy, but one of the disadvantages is that you might find out-of-date packages. Of course, you can also just go online and grab software. Let's say we want Discord. And here we go, it detects that we're running Linux, hit download for Linux, and then we get two options. We want the Debian package since we're running Linux Mint. A really simple way to look at files that end in .deb is almost like an .exe or executable file like you'd get in Windows. There is more to it than that, but when you're just starting out on Linux, that's an acceptable way to look at it. And here we can see the .deb file is downloaded, we'll click on that, and it opens the installer. You hit install package, and we can see here what it's doing is using apt to install the file, and we hit authenticate. And that's it, the software is installed, and we can now access it through the main menu. Discord, there we go. So this has been an introduction to Linux Mint, and I hope you can see as I click around here and navigate around the operating system that it's not as intimidating as you think it is. It's very friendly, it looks modern, it's customizable, it's very clean as well. There are no ads or strange glitches that are happening all the time. Everything just kind of works. This is just my demo machine, the 2012 MacBook Air, but I use Linux Mint daily on my desktop as my only operating system. Here's a screenshot of its desktop. I use this machine mainly for gaming. Pretty much every title on Steam works well, thanks to the compatibility layer Proton. I also edit videos in DaVinci Resolve. And of course, web browsing, emails, and office programs all work great as well. This also marks the start of a new series on this channel, where I'll be making a few guides and tutorials in Linux Mint, and I'll also publish things in text form on my blog, which you can find in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.